Hi, you're watching House Sparks Mega Worldwide. Uh, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hello. Um, hi, chat room people. People, my people. <clears throat> if I may, let's get in here and I'll see you guys right there. There you are. Hi, guys. Um, Trump has, do you think the general idea is that Trump has something on him? Yeah, very possibly. I mean, he, he obviously was gathering compromat on people close to him more than anybody else. Um, but uh, like a, a lot of this just seems like old fashioned, like Machiavellian bullshit, quite frankly. Sorry, Lindsay, Trump knowing Russia's plan and being willing to help them is, uh, oh God, it's, it's so, yes, I'm, I'm on the road. I'm in, uh, uh, just can't wait to get on the road again. Does Hal ever pee? I am holding it. It's just thanks for caring. And I didn't, I've only been sipping this iced tea or I would have been completely screwed by now. Um, See, I don't, I don't know that a gay sex tape would do anything in that regard. Again, the idea, the, the old, the old saying is, uh, live boy or dead girl. That's the thing that would kill you in politics. Um, at this point, um, <laughs> uh, that it's almost like one of those two things is what you use to maintain power on someone else. Anyways, so just crazy. Underage escort in theory. That's the idea. Yeah. Go to the washroom. We can wait. I'll be okay. Because I'm only going to do an hour, by the way, since I've been on for three hours already, if that's okay from with everybody else. Because people can roll back and see uh, the earlier part of the show if they want more. Is that all right for people who are just joining us? Is that cool? Um, there you go. Yeah, unless you're Matt Gates. All right. Now, um, uh, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, and occasionally, um, when we when we want to, we hear a lot of stupid takes in the news. Some that have become so normalized that people are like, "Yeah, it's yeah, it's idiotic and pointless and ridiculous, and uh, no one understands how anyone could think it." But they've heard it so many times that they just absorb it, like money printer go burr, and that we caused inflation by printing so much money, blah blah blah, during COVID. Like it's, they're using this whole Volcker myth to uh, apply itself to uh, apply, um, you know, the wrong solution to uh, the, the right, the right solution to the wrong problem. Um, and the best example I, I think I, you know, or analogy I can give is you, you've been coming to a doctor for years for headaches and, uh, and he treats them a certain way, he gives you medicine for your migraines or whatever. And then you come in. Uh, with a railroad spike stuck through your fucking skull. And he's like, uh, some more Excedrin then? You know, and uh, because, uh, like, no, I have a railroad spike in my fucking head. And he's like, you got a headache, right? Well, it hurts. Yeah. Um, really bad? Yeah. Yeah. So we've, you've had headaches before? Uh-huh. Yeah, you treat them. Well, then, well, let me write you a prescription. Asshole, I have a railroad spike sticking through my fucking head. <laughs> so, um these guys are trying to solve for a migraine with a railroad spike. And so this is Glenn tells the truth about how bad our economy really is. Thank God. Something By the way, I might not stay for this whole video. We might bail out at some point because it's going to become tiresome. And at some point, he's just going to start making his rambling to get himself to commercial break. With you that uh, comes from uh, Brandon Smith. Uh... I think this is uh, probably um, the most accurate on what is coming. I told you, I've been telling you this for a long time. And none of it has come true. I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago that you were going to start to see Saudi Arabia with the World Economic Forum get off of the U.S. dollar. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, people have been yammering about this with the World Economic Forum. No. Uh, on their own is the idea is that they're going to sell some stuff to China and Yuan. It's the idea. And, um, and we'll, we'll see how long that lasts. Fill your boots, man. I have said since 2008. <clears throat> show that 
The end is imminent, but this time I mean it. Be a path where the dollar doesn't collapse. <laughs> Show me a path where the dollar doesn't collapse. And he's been saying it since 2008, which means it doesn't matter who the fuck the president is. It's just, he just sees doom written in the tea leaves. And I've been given two answers every time from all of the experts. <laughs> and, and by experts, he means his own thoughts, reading stuff he doesn't understand. The U.S. dollar is the only way for anybody in any country to buy oil. It's called the petrodollar. <laughs> okay, obviously he's talking to, um, he's, he's thinking, A, idiots are experts. Secondly, why are you talking to the most condescending idiots you can find? Um, the petrodollar is a, uh, it is a euphemism around Bretton Woods about how Saudi Arabian, you know, traded in, in dollars. But lots of other countries have oil and sell it in lots of different other currencies. The thing is, they sell it in those currencies, but a lot of times the transfer is done in U.S. dollars because they don't trust the basis of that other currency. And if you get in bed with somebody like China, they will fucking cadaver their their currency or raise it to buy a bunch of oil from you and then drop it when you're ready to spend it. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. But what happens if the petro, it's never going to go away? Yeah, it is. As soon as we get off of oil, the problem is if there's a petrodollar, there's a fucking plastic toy from China dollar and there's a agricultural dollar and there's, there's a fucking wheat dollar because as the reserve currency for a shit ton of industries and, and is exchanged between a bunch of countries as a trust mechanism it is not just the done. It's not just oil that is traded that way. Saudi Arabia is our good friend. Okay, I don't know. I don't know who the fuck this person is that he's making up. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that, Sultan. They know what getting off the petrodollar would do to their very good friend and protector, the United States. So it's not going to happen. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to know that Glenn only has condescending conversations with fantasy people in his fucking head. Again, this is him. This, uh, he didn't have this conversation. He read this someplace, and that's how he hears the voice of whoever's reading it, and that's how he responds to things he's reading. This is this whole conversation went with, okay, okay. That's how it went. And, you know, another thing, Glenn, that you don't understand is there's just too much out there to lose. And these banks and these countries... They're not just going to let the dollar collapse. They, they'll lose too much. So stop worrying your cute little head about the dollar. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm not, it's not what you're saying. It's how you're saying it that is upsetting me. Okay. Okay. All right. If you want to talk to me like I'm a fucking toddler, um, and look, don't, don't give me that I'm just printed words. This is the voice you make in your head because of your own self-esteem problems. I don't need to hear it. Well, <laughs> that's what you will hear from all of the experts. <clears throat> that is either head in the sand ignorance <clears throat> or a blatant lie. The th because the real expert is Glenn Beck. Okay, which is why when I read people saying that's not true about me, or the words that I think aren't true, ah, I just make the, it sounds like, fuck you, Glenn. The thing that has kept our dollar in place mm -hmm. is the petro status. <laughs> okay, uh, no. It means... No, it's a, it's, it undergirds it absolutely, but the, uh, um... The stability, quite ironically as, as it is, it might seem to you, the stability of our stock market and our industries is why that dollar remains stable, not because of oil and gas, and not strictly because of the buying and selling of it. That Saudi Arabia will only trade in, and OPEC will only trade in U.S. dollars. So if you have a yuan or a ruble or a yak. A yuan? You mean a yuan? You have to buy a dollar that you can send then to OPEC. Okay. 
That's why all the countries keep the U.S. dollar on hand. They need it to buy fuel. Well, guess what just happened at the World Economic Forum? A <laughs> thing that will never, ever happen. Oh, God. <laughs> the Saudis have now said, yeah, we'll pretty much take anything. We are not that picky. <laughs> yeah, you, you can buy it with other things. Sure, go ahead. Let's give that a whirl. Well, Glenn, that will never... It just did. It just did. And the dollar collapsed immediately. Clearly. I mean, the experts know this, that if it ever happened, this would be the end all... But the dollar's got to be... I got to go check. Hold on one second. I'm going to... Let's see where the dollar is right now. It's probably worth 70 cents right now. It's on its way down. Hold on. U.S. Whoops. You... Let me get it back out of here. U.S. dollar... Whatever, da da da. U.S. dollar index. Well, if it's, by golly, if it's, if the collapse is coming, it's not here yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a dollar that is worth a dollar two. Now it's down from, it's, it's fluctuating. Uh, from a dollar two fifty point five zero to a dollar two point one zero, it's down point eighteen points from from four a.m. when it was really high. When other countries were getting dollars, <laughs> and you uh, have haven't these people seen the World Economic Forum? How, why aren't they running for the hills? That. De- but Glenn, the dollar is already collapsed. That's worth, that's like, you're not even looking at the right chip. All right, fucking hell. <laughs> okay, it's done. I mean, I, I don't even know why we have to watch the rest of it. The dollar is uh, probably worth 12 cents right now. We're, we're on the road to rupee well, uh, world. Well, I mean, the, the rich and the powerful, I mean, they have too much to lose and they'll never just allow the dollar <clears throat> unless the rich and <laughs> again i don't know this little play that's happening in his head powerful are part of something like uh, uh the deep state the establishment the illuminati the pentaveret it's the pentaveret um a great reset unless the rich and powerful <clears throat> are the ones that know what's coming because mm-hmm. they're the ones that screwed it up. They're the ones that have been funneling money to themselves from our treasuries and from our printing presses. Yeah, that's that's what you would do. So here's the great plan. Uh, Illuminati, gather round. So here's our plan. We're going to funnel U.S. dollars to ourselves to make ourselves really rich and then i got this idea from watching glenn back i'm a brilliant person and then we're gonna crater the d- where's everybody going where'd you guys guys come back where where's no we get a lot of it and then we, yeah that's what i'm come all right spot plan get back i'm fucking with you come back in. gold yeah you like that okay so we're gonna we're gonna stockpile gold and then we're going to switch to a lead-based standard. Where le- where are you going? Stop. Come back. What? Fuck me. All right. I'm sorry, guy. I was just messing around. Crypto. <clears throat> I've been shot. <laughs> While they're screwing the little guy. <laughs> like, we're, we're this close to, like, uh, like audit the Fed and there's no you know fucking Nixon again. They seem to get richer. Why is that? Because they make the stuff most people want and most people will scrounge together money they make from work to buy stuff. And sometimes it's out of their price range so they'll leverage it or buy it through credit and they'll create more debt than they can handle. And then they, that's how they stay little and the, the part of it. I, I don't know. I, maybe they're maybe they're just scooping up all the, like the, the shell based trade in Central Africa or something. I don't know what. Come the banks 
have received trillions of dollars, but the little people didn't even know that was happening. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was because they couldn't see over the counter. Is that why? Fucking hell. First of all, who the fuck didn't know that banks got money after, say, 2008 or something? It was like the entire fucking conversation about whether the banks got it. And secondly, the banks, because they didn't want to be beholden to the government and limited by the rules put on them because they had borrowed government money, paid it back so fucking fast um, that uh, the, the Treasury, the Fed, made money on the bailouts of the banks. They made a profit. The U.S. taxpayer loaned money to bail out banks and then got more money back than they handed out. <laughs> Fuck me. It's almost as if... <laughs> it's almost as if Glenn... Uh, farts and then does this and goes, I've just had an idea. <laughs> These people were... <laughs> Those people, them people, they, uh, you, them people. Robbing our treasuries, looting our countries, <laughs> uh -huh. knowing that it's going to collapse and they're positioning themselves to be ready to have a lot of currency they're going to make worthless. When it collapses into the system, they are building. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. I, I built this giant, I built this building and we're going to demolish it. Really? Yeah. Why are we on the roof? Uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Why are you smoking? No reason. <clears throat> this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> and the best thing about this is this asshole thinks he's on to something. <laughs> that don't know are you yeah because you don't listen to enough glenn beck okay let him straighten you out okay set settle down stop laughing and listen oh, it's a conspiracy theory is it yes <laughs> is it yes <laughs> you can play that oh i know as much as you want ah that's sweet I feel free now. I'm telling you, these are the robbers. <laughs> Ooh. Burglars sounds more exciting. These are the guys that have been hiding in the hills. <laughs> there's hills. There's The hills have eyes. There's gold in them, there hills, but it's been taken by the deep state. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Oh, my gosh. Get your pitchfork, Glenn. Glenn, where did he fucking... Oh, he's fucking on... He's on that Bitcoin website again. As soon as you get done, we're going to charge you up that hill. These are the ones that are stealing you blind. <laughs> yes, Klaus Schwab is stealing you blind because he fucking did a thing with the, with the, um, because he had a book that he wrote, that Glenn wrote a book about his book. Mm hmm. It's. Golden Goose. It will never. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to chop the head off the Golden Goose. Yeah, that, that's good business sense. You can tell these uh, World Economic Forum is an ironic title. These are these are the these are a special group of fucking businessmen. Um, oh, Jonathan says, uh, rest in peace, radio icon J Marvin. Oh, sorry to hear that, J uh, Jonathan. Thanks for uh, the super chat. That's very sweet of you. Um, and happy birthday, Wes Webb. Uh, from Vincent. And Mark P., uh, happy birthday to our boy Wes Webb. There he is in the chat, but hiding. I understand. It's his birthday. He can do whatever he wants. Um, and when they actually... <laughs> I, I, by the way, I have to say, I like res um, condescension human centipede Glenn Beck. <laughs> Where he's just like... <laughs> He's like mad at himself. <laughs> Start to get out of dollars. These countries are already selling their dollars, but it hasn't really started yet. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, I'll uh, tell you what. You let me know when it starts.
because I, I thought you said it started at the WEF when the Saudis did it. This is it. You said they'll never do it, and they did it, and that's not the beginning. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the precursor. As they start to get rid of their dollars, what happens to those dollars? We get them back. They're no longer in somebody's vault. Uh-huh. Now they're going to, it's going to cause inflation. They're going to come back here and some poor person's going to pay their phone bill with them. Fuck. They are now pouring in from all over the country. Oh, that sounds sweet. From all over the country. Which part of the country? I just want to be near the big uh, opening of the volcano of cash. It's apparently going to start. This is so fucking stupid. And here's the thing. It's one thing to say stupid shit like this. It's another to do it in a way that, like, don't you understand, you fucking idiots? Like, this is so pitiful. Which makes our inflation even higher. Mm -hmm. You'll have to have a way out. I mean, <gasps> hey, what a coincidence. We have the central bank digital currencies being approved right now. Uh, n no. No. We've talked about this before. He he did a huge story about this. They they had, they did a pilot program and literally yelling and everybody at the Fed was like, "There's no reason for it. It's fucking dumb." P.S. This fucker thinks crypto is a good idea. All over the Western world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rishi Sunak. Uh, he's doing very well in England. Uh, that pilot program will. They're just going to push it right through. Yeah, I guess uh, Charles will sign it immediately. He won't even look. The IMF has been working on a basket of currencies for a while now, just in case the U.S. dollar would ever collapse. Whew. Good thing they've done that just recently when one of them must have figured out that, oh, all the things they've been telling. All right. They, now he's now he's just losing his mind. Uh, Chris Bono, if you're watching, he's doing your act. This is this is. This is, this reminds me of, I'm not kidding, not even close to kidding, same hand movements, same like face stuff that Chris Bono does when he's doing a really, an actually well done character of somebody stupid trying to appear intelligent. And, uh, all right. It is not true. And so somebody like at two o'clock yesterday was like, hey, I know it's Sunday, but I just figured something out. We should do something. <laughs> I don't know what that was either. That was like, can somebody call Don Jr.? We need a gibberish expert who can who can break this shit down. Yeah, they've been planning this for a long, long, long time. <laughs> okay, well, let me know when the plan comes to fruition because it's either started or hasn't started yet. And I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want you to listen to Brandon Smith. 2017, he said, I published an article, The Saudi Coup Signals War and the New World Order Reset. I noted at the time that the sudden power shift over to the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, indicated a change in Saudi Arabia's relationship mm -hmm. to the U.S. Mm -hmm. To understand how drastic this coup has been, consider this. For decades, Saudi kings maintained political balance by doing, uh, by doling out vital power positions to separate, carefully chosen successors. Okay, by the way, um, most people in the Middle East view the Saudi royal family as the fucking Beverly Hillbillies, but evil. That they're a bunch of hicks. They're a bunch of rich Kardashian assholes who lucked into power, but aren't, you know, they view, you know how we always talk about the British royal family being inbred? Yeah, that's, they talk about them the same way. The, the Saudis are, like, it's, they're, everybody in that entire region is counting the days until they can topple those fuckers. Positions such as the defense minister, the interior ministry, the head of the National Guard. But today, Mohammed bin Salman controls all three positions. Foreign policy, defense matters, oil and economic decisions and social changes are all in the hands of one man. Okay, so basically, uh, it, so he wants to, it, in rotation, fuck with the United States, who apparently, you know, according to 
the weather underground just topples people whether the fuck we know why or not just so you can kill one guy and everybody's gone i see and the russians won't act on that at all so who backed this well it was backed by the public investment fund a fund comprised of trillions of dollars <laughs> where that come from globalists G you mean Jews? <laughs> he usually means Jews when he says that. Goldman Sachs, Blackstone, BlackRock. Black people. It's all a problem. <laughs> By the way, uh, economics is a very, sorry, economics is a very serious topic with me. And, and there are many moving parts at play in this kind of stuff. And there's a serious conversation to be had about where, um, as we shift away from fossil fuels in general towards renewables and the like, our, what our investment into an aging technology is in the same way that we're not all in on the cotton gin these days, um, that we're going to transition at some point. That's how the world works because the future is is here. Um, so I take that stuff very seriously. It's worth a conversation, and the transition will be fascinating. And the U.S. and our, uh, our near allies will do very well in that transition because we've been preparing for it as a culture for a long time. These guys have not. And that's the wall they're looking at. So, and, and this is their last kind of ditch effort to keep themselves afloat temporarily until they transition into something else. And, and everybody knows it except Glenn. Head of the so I laugh at Glenn and his take because I will not take seriously a serious topic when discussed by an inserious person. He's now <laughs> fell into favor, favor, favor with the globalist for <laughs> one reason. He openly supports vision for 2030. What is the vision for 2030? Um, the collapse of China. Oh, the vision for 2030. That, that's the World Economic Forum. That's the UN. That's that. I mean, it's every, any situation where countries get together. It's, it's bad. I mean, BRICS is fine. Uh, just autocracies and violent uh kleptocracies getting together to try and uh sell uh, you know arms to every drug cartel in the world and uh and violent terrorist and and separatist group but uh you know, the un gag that's the great <laughs> why did they bleep out reset is that an ongoing gag fuck you we're gonna get off all of these carbon did he or is it the great rectum now if we just called it that i mean you could say that uh, fuel. He's, or did he say reshit and they had to fix it? Did he? I'm not kidding. Economic forum. That's the UN. That's 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 the great. We're gonna get off all of these carbon. Uh... I, again, I. Is he trying to draw attention to the Great Reset because he's selling that fucking book and so he's. <laughs> he's not selling any books and nobody cares. Fuels. These fossil fuels. Uh huh. And we're going to have carbon controls. Wait, Glenn, that is the, the, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's Saudi Arabia. Why would they ever do that? Because they don't have as much oil as they say they do and they're cash poor. Because the Saudis have been given access to ESG-like funding, as well as access to AI advancements. <laughs> They're using chat GPT to make their own uh, political papers now. The so-called digital economy. Yes, the future. Hmm. So the Saudi elites are willing to dump the dollar and even oil for access to a reimagined economy. Okay, uh, two things. One, if you believe that, and he clearly does, that should tell you something about how the Saudis feel about the future of fossil fuel and their economy, that they are literally on their last legs about it. Secondly, um, it should also tell you something about they've looked at AI and they've looked at the future of, of the digidollar or whatever, the, the, the technological uh, future that we're all headed into. And, and decided that's where the money is. 
And this motherfucker thinks that that because we're doing it too and we're doing it first, that that means I don't know what the fuck he thinks it means, <laughs> except they're they're they think the future isn't in oil either. So why would you have a petrodollar if everyone's moving away from fossil fuels, including the Saudis? Jesus Christ. A reimagined world. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't know why that's funny to me. Here's the thing. Finally. Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. has jumped on this bandwagon. Mm -hmm. China. Now, it seems like they've jumped off the petroleum bandwagon. Has, bumped, uh, has jumped on this bandwagon. Oh, we're all bumping on this bandwagon. I, you know, I like, I like bandwagons. I like any kind of wagon. I like a hayride. I personally think that Aaron Neville's albums were all written um, on a hayride. That's my, uh, you know. I know something about you. It's just a theory. When this really starts to kick in. Yeah, you let us know. Well, I'll, just, I'll be holding my breath. Our economy. Mm-hmm. You mean the economy that makes all the high-end chips in the world? All of them? We design all of them. The machinery is made by us and and the Dutch. But, uh, yeah, so the, the Saudis think they're going to get out from under uh, the, the U.S. dollar by moving away from fossil fuels and towards high-end computer chip manufacturing and semiconductors. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, well, let me just put it this way. Put it some way. I honest to fucking God don't know what he's talking about at this point. <laughs> we outsource our inflation. What? Okay? Because everybody else is running on dollars that they have to buy from us. Um, mm -hmm. Their inflation goes up because of what we do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... It, so uh, Okay, track, first of all, no, supply uh, of, of goods wanted by the populace and the availability of them, the ability to get them into the country, stuff bought in, in through U.S. dollars and stuff bought from other people has nothing to do, the, the strength of the U.S. dollar does not affect how fast apples grow on trees or whether chickens are, are live or die from H1N1 or H5N1. So... I think I told you this in 2009. The rest of the world's going to hate America. If this ever comes really out and everybody really knows, there's a couple of heads on the chopping block. One, America. <laughs> Again, can anyone make any sense of this? That's just over. It's just over. They're going to hate us if they find out that they use our... Do they even know they use our dollar to buy stuff? We've destroyed our choices. To just spend and spend and spend and spend and spend. Our choices are going to be used against us by foreign leaders. Oh, I see. Uh, he's he's talking about uh, that the debt that the national debt is going to destroy the the power of the dollar, and they're going to be mad because we could average the dollar. When in reality, there are not enough dollars in circulation for all the people that trust and want them, and we keep it that way to keep it, its value high, but it's actually too high because there's less dollars in circulation than are desired. Hence why it's worth a dollar two. Even if the Saudis get off of the US dollar, uh, everybody else is still gonna stay on it because they know the Saudis are moving away from oil and, and what they're gonna trade, they're gonna have to do it on a unilateral basis with their neighbors because they won't have the control point of, of running OPEC plus. No, that's just stupid. Can't keep their people in control and need a villain. And it will be the United States. Then on top of... Yeah, unlike any other time in history for th that those groups of people. ...that uh, you have the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum, which has orchestrated a lot of this. The Federal Reserve. What happens when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates... Because they got to suck all that money back in. Uh, and yet, we don't stop spending. Mm. 
That's <laughs> all right. Uh, like this is just fucking. Like this, he, his notes have to be written in crayon on toilet paper. Be a problem, don't you think? And we're no, I don't think you know anything that you're talking about at all. I think this is. I I've heard genuine conversations about debt to GDP ratio in the United States and and the effect. Or, or lack thereof that federal interest rates that the feds interest rates will have on either and the, the, it he's not even in the ballpark of of even sounding like someone who comprehends this shit i have to start spending because things like social security it's on the brink of collapse when is somebody going to stand up I, I don't know, Glenn. This is where we're going to fucking commercial. This is where he's, like, leading it to commercial. When is somebody going to stand up? Stand up and say what, fucko? Saudi Arabia, how dare you? <laughs> Politician. A real leader. I mean, I'm going to be 59 in a couple of weeks. 59. I can't believe it. I don't know what happened. Oh, we all watched. But all of a sudden, I'm 59 years old. And the world still hasn't ended, even though you've been clamoring about it for decades. I've known my whole life. I'm not getting Social Security. Sorry. If I get Social Security, it's going to be worthless. And by the way, yes, he is. It's going to be worthless. I No, it isn't. Known this my whole life. No, you have thought this your whole life. Okay. No, not okay. There was a gap in from Boomer to Gen X. Where people are like, oh shit, there aren't enough Gen Xers to pay for the boomers. And then the millennials get, and then Gen X, like we do, fucked more than people thought and had millennials. And there are a lot more of them. We don't have the demographic problem of a lot of other countries because Gen Xers gave birth to a lot of millennials. That's, that's where the tax base comes from this. And also, by the way, Deflation uh, of caused specifically by technology, both in healthcare um, and in techno, you know, and in even just tracking disease when you have it, so that it's not more expensive. Disease is getting cheaper and cheaper to treat because of technology, and technology will get cheaper and cheaper to make. That's where the savings in Social Security is, because the reason the Social Security Trust Fund has so much trouble um, is because. It came up in a time when we really were behind the eight ball as far as dealing with infectious diseases, cancer, age-related diseases, macular degeneration, arthritis, autoimmune disorders, all the shit that comes with aging. And now as we get better at it, and as that we approach a period where, you know, there, we've, we're approaching the AIDS vaccine and we're approaching a possible cancer vaccine and those kind of things are treatments for those specifically that are much quicker and less invasive and save more lives and extend life and all that kind of stuff. Your cost of health care, which means your cost overall, the highest amount of cost of your later life, goes down precipitously compared to what you would have spent in your final years in 1986. Why is it short? Because at one point, mm -hmm. we had enough people working that could pay yeah, this for is... the older people. Okay. Yeah. We used to have a bunch of young people working. All right. And it, they all contributed to the Social Security. I think it was like 16. Same shit. Right. This is because this is a boomer problem. This is, this is what he's clamoring about. There are too many boomers. This is something people have talked about in the, demogra the demographic issue in the United States. Not nearly as bad as everybody says it is. And again, what... So, you know, each each year goes by the solutions and creature comforts of life get cheaper and easier to produce. There'll be a bump in that because of supply chains over the next couple of years. But that's it to one. So 16 people were working and they their portion of their Social Security would go to the one. It's now two and a half to one. How are you going to keep that up, especially when people start losing their jobs? How are you going to do that? UBI. No. The the most logical thing to do is universal. Ba it's again, he's just going to come out for UBI. Allowance. Now is to begin telling everyone 
You're just going to just Logan's run. Everybody into the pit. When you hit 65, you got to keep working. Unless there is... Okay, so this whole thing is about extending uh, the the age by which you get Social Security. That's that's what we're talking about. You know, if you're, if you're 65 and you're getting it, you're 65 and you're getting it. But if you're 64, you're fucked. But you got to keep working. Most people do. And so many people do, like, especially in the managerial class, every every fucking consultant at 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 major corporations, except for Ivanka Trump, I suppose. And it's not like the Trump organization is a major corporation, but uh, they they hire their the people who've retired as consultants. They work on a fee. If you're 60. You get half. Now, this is going to be a real problem because I paid Social Security my whole life, why don't? Yeah, fucking. I don't want to. He's not going to retire. The fuck. What are you worried about? Your back breaking lifestyle of of Sonic and and I guess vanilla Dove Bar microphones. Get it? Because it doesn't work. I fought against it, but we could never get it changed. Okay. So for the next fifteen, he, he fought against Social Security, and now he's pissed that he's not going to get it. Way to bootstrap, Glenn. There's 20 years, whatever it is. Here's a good idea. How about everybody who financially doesn't need it, forego it? I do that. Yeah, if you, 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 you forego it, and if at a certain point you get to the age where you need it, and you're like, yeah, I forego it as long as I could, but I'm down to a certain point, you can go file for it, and, and it kicks in like welfare at a certain income bracket. If it's not going to change your life, Send it back. Like insurance, you never you never need it. And and get some you'll get some sort of credit. It will give you a, it send you on a cruise. But it has to change. By the way, so, thank you, Susan. People who are fifty nine need to understand you got to work until seventy two. I don't want to work until I'm seventy two. Believe me, we wish you could retire yesterday. But I'll work until I'm 72 or 75. Social Security was designed at a time when the average guy who was the main worker died at 62. It was rare that you made it to 65. Right. So the uh, money from your SSI would go to your progeny and help put your kids through school. If dad died as the bre single breadwinner for the home, that money went to them. Ask Paul Ryan. It's how he went to fucking school. This is, this is what happens when you, when you see the entire world through a self-involved lens. So maybe if you want to go back to that, maybe you're working till you're 80 now. I plan to. I want. I. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna George Burns this motherfucker. But nobody will touch that because no one is telling you the truth. By the way, what did this? What What are we looking at here right now? This is a right hook. This is a. This is a sneak jab or a right hook. That he he set this all. The world's gonna collapse. The dollar's going away. It's completely fucked. So we definitely have to raise the retirement age. It's the only way we can save any of this shit. I don't want to do it, but we got to do it. That's what that. Uh, nestled that's the fucking pill and the peanut butter in this bullshit no one will tell you how bad things are but you know how bad things are well then why would you have to be told <laughs> it's not so much that i know it's sort of a sneaking suspicion like i i go outside and there was this lady with like her ends of her hair were blue and i was like Ugh, woke and then i was then like could look at eggs and every, all the other groceries are normal priced and half off. And there's all sorts of breaks and coupons and stuff like that. But eggs are expensive all of a sudden. So thanks, Joe Biden. And then I was like, I just know this is because of, it's because of Klaus Schwab. Do you know 25% of all millennials right now have their rent paid by mom and dad? <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of them are in school. 25%? Mm-hmm. What, uh, how, uh, Millennials, um, like any other group, uh, what is it, 20-year period where the millennials were born? Uh, so at any point, about a quarter of the, like, the youngest of the group are in college. <laughs>
has their rent paid by mom and dad. But there's more. So there's a new poll out. This uh, oh, he just edited his own bullshit. Story in the blaze today. Poll measured how many millennials are getting their bills paid by their parents. One fourth of uh, millennials get. Oh, you said twenty five percent. I call bullshit. Their uh, parents to either pay the rent or help pay the rent. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Oh, thank you. Thank you. My uh, yeah. A quarter is twenty five percent. Okay. Cool. I. Yeah, I just thought he was using Glenn Beck math. So I just think it's I just think it's bad form to switch from percentages to to fractions like that without a warning. It's just rude. Um another <laughs> one uh is Thanks, Dennis. 19%. 19% of No, oh, it's going down. That's good. And it only took that was quick. Adults say their parents pay their rent in another poll. Another 19% of adults say their parents pay for their groceries. 16% say their parents pay for the utilities. 39% of millennials struggle to find information and other resources to help with their finances. They don't understand that Dave Ramsey has a show? Now, 69% of respondents in the Northeast say they earn money by helping their neighbors. Only 43% say the same in the Southeast. What's wrong with the Southeast? What's a, this? Hey, Carolinas, what the fuck's the matter with you? You got no gumption? Get a paper route. Go mow some lawns. Wondering if that's because people just hail, help their neighbors. Uh, yeah, they don't charge you in the South because they're just, they're just nasty, y'all. Of 80 we ain't got to. Our millennials work, so we don't have to do that. They send us a check. Our children, they they we they're rich and famous now. They do. She, my daughter's got an OnlyFans, and my son sells meth, and so they've got a little extra at the end. They got a little extra money at the end of their month. You know what I'm saying? And they send us some. So we, I'm glad to mow this lawn for you. Whatever. I don't care that it's gravel. I don't care that you don't want me here. Fuck you. 5% of respondents see themselves as financially responsible when it comes to things like credit scores and savings, but 50% of them struggle with unnecessary spending and unbudgeted expenses. 40% struggle to remember to pay the bills on time. To remember to pay the bills on time. Not do you struggle to pay your bills on time. Do you struggle to remember to Okay. That's because they're doing so well. They're like, oh, fuck, I forgot to, I got to write a check for that shit. That's not what, like, broke people. Believe me, nobody broke as fuck. And anybody who has spent any decent amount of time in their life broke as fuck knows this. You don't forget that the bill is due. You just can't do anything about it. Anybody who forgot to pay a bill isn't doing it because they're in dire straits or broken somehow. They struggled. Good God. This started out with the fucking end of the petrodollar and the and the Saudis don't love us anymore. And now we're back to fucking kids today. When I, I remember when I was, you know, the age of a millennial, that was the scariest time of the month. I remembered it was constantly there in my back of my mind. Oh, my gosh. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? Right. That's not the group you're talking about. These people are not worried about paying the bills. They forgot. You don't forget if you're not worried. Worry is uh, weaponized imagination. You see something coming ahead and you consider the worst that will come from it. Forgetting is not seeing the future at all in that regard. I made it. I didn't struggle to remember it. But there is also something else that is coming. Okay, so we have Social Security. <laughs> okay, like, honest to God, this is the same fucking conversation. It's collapsing. Nobody's going to do anything about it, okay? Because it's all always framed Thanks, Larry Fig. as freak out, freak out. We're all going to die. We're killing grandma. Uh, <laughs> uh right, right. Uh, uh-huh. That's not going to happen. Okay, well then I'm, I'm glad I didn't worry about it up to this point, so I guess I shouldn't start. Americans care. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna make her eat cat food, unless of course we get rid of the ACA, and then fuck her. <laughs> we have, we have, I believe, 
stopped caring as much because the government has just, I think, stepped in and cared for us because we outsource the caring so that we don't forget to pay the bill so grandma's not eating fucking <laughs> cat food. You might be onto something here, Glenn. Destroyed so much of our responsibility that we... That's what it is. These fucking old people, they just don't, you know, we, we're not responsible for them anymore, so we, we just written it off. Like, Social Security is just, now it's on autopilot, so we don't even think, oh, fuck, I forgot to water grandma. Just think, well, somebody's going to take care of it. No, we're supposed to take... We do take care of it by setting up Social Security and applying it evenly across the entire citizenry. That is the point. Creating Social Security and mandating it is responsible. Borrowing from it for a bunch of other shit, especially unpaid for tax breaks, is not. ...of our elderly. We're supposed to be taking care of the widow. We're supposed... The widow. The widow Jenkins. Where you headed? Oh, I'm going up to the widow Jenkins' house. She needs a little help with her pelvic tilt. ...be doing these things. <laughs> Social... Yeah, but yeah, you gotta understand, millennials would forget. They'd be like, she'd be dead already. So yeah, it's, it's better that a government system is... that, you know, operates on a kind of schedule. <laughs> Security is collapsing. Then you find that millennials are not finding jobs. Then <laughs> too busy going to university. The last piece. So that they can have a job of the future that will last. Uh -huh. The perfect storm. Ah, here it is. All of this together. The Saudis have decided to buy Social Security and and only give American old people yuan with pictures on it that will offend millennials and get the currency canceled no all right more americans mm -hmm. cannot afford their mm -hmm. car payments today than during the peak of the financial crisis of 08 um People lost their cars first in the peak of the financial crisis. The one thing that people lost right away was credit cards, vehicles. This time they didn't because UI helped them maintain that for a while. That's, that's, that's why. And there are more people have cars. And there are more people in general. Now, what's happening with that? What's up with that? How are you going to drive to the Social Security store and pick up cat food for grandma if you can't? <laughs> this is. Glenn tells the truth about how bad our economy really is, is the title of this fucking travesty. <laughs> oh, shit.